much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I don't know if applause fatigue is covered by Obamacare, but after the day. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective. Within about two and a half hours, the President and the Vice President of the United States have spoken to you. That says a lot about you. Name one group in America where that would happen. So I'm from the federal government here to help you. Thanks for coming. So uh, as you know, I'm one of the 16 people that ran against President Trump. <laughs> it didn't take me. I didn't go very far, but I enjoyed the journey. Uh, people ask me, how have we come together so well? I said, well, here's the way it works. I've come to like him, and he likes him, and it seems to work for both of us. <laughs> Didn't he do a great job today? <laughs> to those of you who have had this journey with the RJC since the beginning, there were four people in the beginning, George Klein tells me, and I won't mention any names, but look how far you've come. Isn't this the most amazing thing in American politics? And people ask me, how has the RJC grown so much? I want to thank the Democratic Party <laughs> for all the help you've been. Without you, there would be no us. <laughs> so we've clapped about all the accomplishments, but let's just kind of absorb it off a little bit. So if you told me two years ago that by now the embassy would be moved to Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights would be part of Israel. I don't want to know what you were smoking. How did all this happen? Trump just does what he says he'll do. What can I tell you? Uh, what can I tell you? And to all the people who've got a problem with the uh, capital of Israel being Jerusalem, take it up with God. He did it, not me. <laughs> And when it comes to the Golan Heights, I don't think we can actually absorb and appreciate to the extent we should how big a deal that is, right? How many of you have been to the Golan? <laughs> okay. That doesn't happen a lot back home when I ask that question. So, uh, <laughs> seeing is believing, right? So this was a historic moment to recognize the goal line as part of Israel. They never have to worry again about that border being broken. Uh, at the end of the day, President Trump has done more for Israel, as we've all said in the last two years, than, than people have in generations. Now, this election coming up is going to be a lot of fun, don't you think? Yeah. So uh, when you think about all the things we've done, he's done, with Republican and mostly Republican help, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, he's going to have a good story to tell. Remember when he said in 2016, what do you have to lose? Most people said not much, right? Well, if he repeats that statement, what do you have to lose in 2020? A lot. Your paycheck's going to get smaller, the government's going to get bigger, the military is going to get weaker, and the bad guys are going to get stronger. you got a hell of a lot to lose. So we remember that in, the, in a couple of years from now, right? So, judges, when it comes to judges, this is the Republican Jewish coalition. <laughs> the Republican part of the phrase lights conservative judges who understand the difference between being a judge and people in my business. So the bottom line is when this time is up, he will reshape the judiciary more circuit court nominations than any president in history already. What I like most about the president, he's tough. A lot of people would have pulled the plug on Kavanaugh. He did not. I've been in this business for well over 20 years now, and I never 
dreamed I would see what I saw in the committee. A guy I have known for 20 years, Brad Kavanaugh, one of the most decent people you could ever hope to have as your neighbor, much less a judge. Any Republican president would have chosen him. He'd be on top of anybody's list. And the way he tr was treated tells us a lot about the times in which we live in. And I really do appreciate the fact that President Trump had Brett's back and never gave an inch. So I'm going to talk about the next big thing. You ready for the next big thing? So we've done the embassy thing. We've done the Golan thing. So we're fighting the BDS thing. But here's the next big thing. And I'm working on it as we speak. What if the United States told anybody and everybody in the world that wanted to destroy Israel that an attack against Israel would be considered an attack against the United States. <laughs> what if? What if you were the Ayatollah, which clearly none of you are going to be good candidates for that job, <laughs> and one of your henchmen came in and said, hey, Ayatollah, <laughs> Trump just said that if our rockets are sent to destroy Israel, even though they came from Lebanon, uh, they're coming after us here in Tehran. If you wanted to change the calculation for all the enemies of Israel, you would put this on the table. Now, how many of you believe NATO's been a good deal for America? I do. I believe it's been a great deal for America. Friends are good. How many of you believe that Israel's been a good deal for America? Name one country that provides better intelligence to the United States about common enemies than the state of Israel. Nobody. Israel is our eyes and ears in the most troubled part of the world. Name an enemy of Israel that's not an enemy of us. The one democracy in the entire region. We have every reason in the world as Americans to want Israel to survive be secure and prosperous because it's in our national security interest. So what if, say next year, we could work out an agreement between the two countries, two democracies, that would say we have each other's back. What if what if we had a vote in the Senate in a month or so that the Golan is now part of Israel? What if? What if all the Democratic candidates for president voted against that idea? That would be sad, and I hope they don't. So ladies and gentlemen, We've done a lot in a short period of time, but here's the next big thing. It's time for the United States to let the world know that this relationship between the United States and Israel is important to us. And if it's your goal to destroy the one and only Jewish state, you have to come through us to get them. So, I'm a Baptist from South Carolina. Like many of you, I'm taught from a young age to feel guilty about a lot of things. 
we're all working through it. <laughs> the Democratic Party, if this Green New Deal comes into being, every day will be Shabbat because <laughs> there'll be no planes, cars, or anything. So the vice president's going to speak in a second, but the next guy speaking is my neighbor from Georgia. And let me tell you a little bit about this relationship. The Republican Jewish Coalition has the president and the vice president speaking, and that tells you all you need to know about you regarding the Republican Party. <laughs> but your next three speakers are not of the Jewish faith. We come from red states, and we have one thing in common. From the time we were small, we were told that God blesses those who bless Israel. The foundation of the U.S.-Israel relationship is not just the American Jewish community. It is Christians all over this nation who believe that God has ordained and chosen Good enough for God, good enough for me.